Barkley? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm Wilmer. Wilmer Hammett. I'm the one that sent the telegram. Well, I'm grateful to you for your kindness. Well, a man ain't got a right to call himself neighbor. He ain't helpful. Uh, the house is right up the street. Well, we still can't believe it happened. The Millers were the best you could find. Their girl, Elaine. Uh, she was so pretty. I'm so happy to have your daughter visiting. Well, that's... That's where we buried them. You know, it's hard as blazes to walk by without wanting to go after those pigs that murdered them and then... Well, I guess I'm getting too old for that. But if there's a just God, someday somebody will catch them. They'll get their due. Why did they kill the Millers? Was there any reason? Well, Sam... Mr. Miller, that is. Sam was still alive when we got there. Or she wasn't able to say much, except uh, they were drunk, broke in the house, figuring to find money. And when they didn't, they, they just went mad. Tortured him first. Elaine, well, they used a knife on Elaine before they, before they shot him. Where was my daughter? I found her in the attic bedroom. Thank God they didn't know she was there. I'd like to see her now, please. Oh, yes, sure. Of course. Audra. Audra, I'm so good. Audra. Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I... I tried. The shock. She must have seen what happened. She can't hear or talk. It's like she never saw any of us before. Audra? Oh, my God! several times, Mr. Lassiter. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this your stage line. You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a local weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. My hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ails her. Why don't you shut up? It ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lassiter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lassiter, I'm disappointed in you. A man who owns his own gold mine? Nuggets sticking out of his pockets? I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson, but 
you ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in the depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you are, Mr. Lassiter, I would have to find myself a new occupation, which no doubt would be good for my soul, but would certainly deprive my spirit. Okay. I suggest we all just uh, keep quiet and allow Mrs. Barkley and her daughter to get a little rest. Thank you very much, Mr. Madison. But please don't let our presence interfere with your pleasure. My daughter and I have overcome bigger problems. Oh! Oh! Stopping for water rations? We're stopping for a lame horse. You can all get out and stretch your legs. Miss Barkley, I uh, make it my business to mind my own, but I just can't help thinking a girl as beautiful as your daughter certainly should be blessed with a voice to match. She has a beautiful voice. I've been on some hard luck trips in my life, but this beats it. Fool horse picked up a pebble under his shoe. Now, you ain't gonna stop to rest him, are you? I gotta be in Stockton tomorrow. I ain't resting him. I'm leaving him. He can't hardly touch ground with that hoop. But we're three hours late already. And you're gonna be later. All right, everybody. Half a cup of water each. No more. And let's make it fast. I haven't had enough trouble. Now we gotta lose a horse. Hey, 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 hey. You heard the man. Half a cup. This is for the women. Can't hold them to half rations. Miss Barkley? When she finishes this, uh, I'll bring you some more. Well, it seems to me you brought us our full quota. I'll share it with her. Well, nobody minds if the women have a bit more. We do. But thank you just the same. Audra, I have some water for you. Now, Audra, I know you're thirsty. And we're not going to get any more water for a long time. So please turn around and you can have some. Audra? Let's head him up. Come on, you yeah! Short of water, driver. We're short of water, and we're shy of horse. You can't expect this stage land to be worried about that. Well, now, Mr. Lassiter, the company figured there'd be days like this when there'd be lame horses and leaky water kegs and bothering and complaining passengers. So they set up relay stations. There's one maybe 10, 15 miles down the trail. Well, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask? Let me help you, ladies. fascinating game of chance, Roy, is a game called Germain de Fair. You won't find that game played in any of the army barracks or in the saloons. Europe is where they play that game. Europe, where they never even heard of five-card stud. And that's where I'm gonna take my woman when we get married. Got a nice sound to it, don't it? Honeymoon in Europe. You contemplating marriage, Mr. Lester? I didn't know that. Oh, yes, that's why I'm going to Stockton. That's where she's waiting for me. Hmm. A man spends 20 years getting rich, and in one second, just long enough to say I do, he loses half his fortune. Perhaps that one second will enrich his life far more than a gold mine. Well, now, that depends upon the woman, Mrs. Barkley. That depends upon the woman. Takes a woman to recognize quality. Now, wouldn't you say she had quality, ma'am? Ah, oh, yes, she's lovely. Congratulations. Hey, we got company. Hey! Hey, 
Let that fella catch up with us. Let him ride inside. Hitch up another horse. Uh, up, up. I don't think he plans on joining us. Well, all right. It's gonna be so doggone private. I suggest you get it out. I'm a prospector, not a gambler. I never had any need of weapons. Well, you've been lucky so far. I sincerely hope your luck holds out. other than gold. There are many reasons a man might use a gun. Nobody's riding shotgun on the stage, so he's got to know we're not carrying a strong box. I've got 3,000 gold nuggets on me. If he comes at me, I'll give $500 to the one who cuts him down. $500. Well, if he is interested in money, I think he's after higher stakes. Mrs. Barkley is a rich woman. She'd bring a big ransom. You'd have to climb over me. And I don't need no offer of pay, either. Seems to me I spend the best part of this journey thanking you. That soldier suit sure gives you a lot of guts, don't it, Sonny? Well, maybe everybody's right. Maybe he don't want money. Maybe he just wants revenge. Maybe he's a breed out there under those white man's clothes, looking for revenge for the massacre of his tribe that you soldier boys pulled off. I never massacred nobody. I never had this uniform on until three days ago. I just signed up and I got a two-week furlough before I have to report. Mr. Lassiter? You haven't said one right word since you got on the stage. Well, maybe this is the right one. Maybe he's after you. Maybe you second-carded him in a poker game and won his ranch. Or hearing your low opinion of women, maybe you ruined his sister or took his wife. Maybe you'd like to get your head blown off. Put up the gun, Matson. You're scaring the girl. I, I didn't mean nothing. I didn't mean nothing. Put up that gun, I said. Stay out of this, Roy. Wouldn't you say, gentlemen, that the rider out there is getting just what he wants? We're at each other's throats. Hey, he's gone. Too stubborn to, to make apologies. <laughs> we, we, now we got 10 or 12 hours before Stockton. I say let's just forget all these little disagreements. That's better, Mr. Lester. Relay station! over there. It's awful quiet. Suits me fine.
Nobody around. Horses are gone, too. Been salted. Look. You better get inside. It's just sitting out there on that ridge like a vulture. Well, we'll just sit right here and out waiting. I'll see if I can find something to eat. Lasseter? How about a nice, uh, friendly game of cards? Somebody has a match, I'll put a fire under it. Here you are, man. Oh. Audra? Hmm. You can bet your bottom dollar that leak in the water keg was no accident. What about that pebble that lamed our lead horse? <laughs> well, you're all talking kind of crazy, like that fellow's some kind of a magician or something. Like he can be in all places at one time, like, like, like he knows every move we make. You in the cabin! You won't get hurt, you do what you're told. I want the girl. Leave the girl, the rest of you can ride out, else you'll all die. be ready in a few minutes. You recognize it? You've been shopping at Chef's ever since it opened, just before you left for High Ridge. Remember, you bought Nick a pair of silver spurs there because he stayed up two nights helping you fold Betsy. Uh, Nick is your brother, and you'll be seeing him soon, and you'll be seeing your other two brothers, Jared and he. Oh, Audra. Audra, Audra, I know what you've been through. It was a nightmare. But it's over now. It's all over. You can't shut your mind off forever. Audrey, you are going to listen to me. I am going to make you remember. Now listen to me. Now, we'll start at the beginning. You were in the attic bedroom. Two drunken cowboys broke into the house. And when they couldn't find what they wanted, they tortured the Millers. They used a knife on the lane. Nothing could stop them. And then they killed them. Now face it. Face it. They killed them in cold blood. They would have killed you too. But they couldn't find you. But you're safe now. You're here with me and you're safe. And I won't let anybody hurt you. I'm going to take you home. Home to the family that loves you. I... Oh, God. Oh. You stink to high heaven, Lassiter. Well, why should we give up our lives for some girl we never laid eyes on three days ago? Well, that's what we're all thinking, ain't it? Oh, shut up, will you? Now let the man talk. Man's got a right to talk. Anyways, look at it. 
She can't understand a word we're saying. Do you, honey? Keep these. That's a pretty good trick, Matson. Now, how about making that rider disappear? She don't know sun up from a high wind. I say we ought to do what that fella out there says. Leave her here and we ride on. Well, how do we know? Maybe he don't mean her any harm. Uh, who'd want to hurt a girl who, who ain't, well, well, ain't all there? Why would anybody want to send a girl who ain't all there? to whatever's outside that's turning some men's backbone into sawdust. If you weren't her ma, you'd feel the same as the rest of us. As you? Us, not counting the soldier boy. Now, he can believe all the mush he's fed about protecting the flag and the female race. But for me, I say you got no right asking the rest of us to stick our necks out. What do you say, Mr. Matson? Ma'am, I'm waiting for my ration of water so I can wash down these beans. Not that they're not cooked to a turn, ma'am. Is that all you can think of? No, Roy, Mr. Matson's right. He's a practical man. It is time for our water ration. Well, the water barrel's still on the stage. There should be enough in that to go around. You are about to express an opinion, Mr. Matson. I'm wondering why... why this man... Took so much trouble to, to get this girl. It's plain as the nose on your face, ain't it? A man doesn't have to attempt murder to get a girl, Roy. Now, why are we jawing about that? Who cares why he wants her? Miss Barkley, earlier today you said that your daughter had a beautiful voice. Would it be too painful to tell us how she lost it? She saw three people tortured and murdered before her eyes. One of them a young girl, her best friend. And the shock was too much for her. And why was she spared? She was in the attic bedroom. And the killer didn't see her. And that's why he's coming here now to kill her, so that she won't identify him. A skunk like that ain't fit to breathe the same air she does. I'd get a real joy killing a man like that. Well, you have your chance, Roy. He's waiting right out there on that ridge. I'm betting, Mrs. Barkley, that he's the one that's hounding us. You betting against it? Does it matter? No, it don't. I've been rooting in the rocks and the mud for 20 years. The last to get me a chance to come up for air, I ain't gonna let nothing stop me. He's only one man. Pretty good man. He's got our food, our water. You're four to one. You got a blood feud with the killer. That's your business. My business is to get to Stockton. We'll get to Stockton, Lassiter. Maybe. Maybe too late for me. Maybe she won't be waiting for me. Maybe she'll think I'm not coming. She knows you love her. She'll wait. 
She don't know nothing about me except what I wrote in my letters. Mail order bride? Something wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. And she will wait for you. If we don't make a deal with that bushwhacker, I'll show up in a box. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lassiter. He's a coward. He'll never come within gun range. He's just trying to scare you off so he can kill a defenseless girl. And please, please don't let him. This is an easy place to defend. I'll take the first shift standing guard. And maybe tomorrow morning the horses will be rested and we can make Stockton by tomorrow night. Hold on, soldier boy. You might be needing this. Four to one, Lassiter. Looks like you lose. Ma'am, this time you keep your water ration. Careful, Mr. Matson. You'll be accused of being gallant. Not guilty. I only have one interest in your well-being, ma'am. We just can't afford to lose a good cook. Sure, I know you're worried, but there's no sense acting like the world's coming to an end just because the stage is a little late. A little late? It's ten minutes past five. Maybe we better ride out of ways, Nick. Look, can't you wait just a little while longer? Maybe they threw a wheel or busted an axle. Well, now, it'd only take a few minutes to fix a broken wheel, an hour at most for a broken axle. Come on, Nick, we waited too long already. Right. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Sure, I know what must have happened. The bridge over Pride's Gulch went out, and if it ain't been fixed, that means the stage has got to go by way of Greenfield. That'd bring it here in the morning. The morning? Oh, we don't charge any for the extra ride. They would have telegraphed, wouldn't they? Well, they can't do that. The wire ain't been strung through Greenfield yet. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. Well, I'm sorry, boys. I'll tell them you were here. Yeah. Made a move. How do you know? That campfire could be just for show. He could be crawling down that hill at us right now. You think so? I don't know the man. I don't know what's on his mind. If you want me to stay out here with you, I will. No. One of us is enough, I guess. You sure? Yep. I said so, didn't I? There's one good thing. She doesn't know what's happening. I apologize for that, Mrs. Barkley. That's all right, Roy. Solitaire. Would you like to play, pretty lady? Here. Take it. Red Jack goes on the Black Queen.
stole my shotgun. And a horse. All on account of, of her. She ain't worth nothing. She ought to be put away. Now stop it, stop it, both of you. Did you hear what he said? It doesn't matter now. He took the water. Whoever he is up there, he sure knows how to drive the pikers out of the game. These horses don't get water soon. They ain't gonna last. Neither are we, Barney. Well, the Watson Ranch has a line cabin up in the hills. Maybe 20 miles off the trail. They got food stashed away there. Maybe they got water, too. Water? But you're not sure? No, I ain't sure they got water. And I ain't sure two horses in their condition can pull a full stage for 20 miles. Mister, I ain't sure of nothing. Morning, ma'am. I don't suppose he's gone yet. I doubt it. Barney says there may be some water at a cabin up in the hills. Meanwhile, um, why don't you put this in your mouth? Relieve the thirst. The heritage my father left me. Didn't your mother tell you to wash it off first? Oh, my mother. My mother wasn't around long enough to tell me anything. When my father lost his job at the woolen mills at Hartford, why, my mother couldn't stand the strain, so she ran off with a more affluent drummer. I was 10 years old at the time. And so, at 10 years old, your opinion of women was born, hmm? And at 20 years old when I got married for the first time, and at 30 years old when I got married for the second time. And did they run off with affluent drummers, too? Well, frankly, ma'am, I just wiped it out of my mind uh, why my marriages were such a disaster, but don't get me wrong, I don't blame any of them for their lack of character. It's a woman's nature. Well, maybe it was your lack of good judgment. Maybe. Roy, where's Audra? Well, I don't know. Well, I thought she was with you. No. Check the shack in the back. I'll check the stables. Audra. Audra! Case, we better get back to the stage. Come on. You all right, Mrs. Barkley? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. Audra's all right, too, Roy. Sure, sure. We're all all right. Now let's get moving. Don't discourage easy.
He got us beat. But how did he get here before us? Doesn't matter how. He just did. There ain't a drop of water between here and Stockton. Well, we can survive longer than that without water. Look. Lady, I'm checking out. Oh, no. Will $5,000 get you to stay? Lady, where does a dead man spend $5,000? Don't unhitch that horse. That horse is company property. I just bought it. And Mr. Matson has a gun to see that the deal sticks. Well, if Mr. Matson has the brains of a goose egg, he'll check out with me. Each of you gets $5,000 the minute my daughter and I set foot in Stockton. Oh, I don't need pay for the privilege of escorting you and your daughter to Stockton, Mrs. Barkley. The purpose of the young is to make the old seem greedy and corrupt. I accept your offer, Mrs. Barkley. We can't force you to stay. Now, that's a prime choice, ma'am. Go on foot without water and die alone, or stay here and die with some company. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. I'll see to that. All right, Barney, let's get out of here. Could be. Sure, any of us go for that water bag, he's got a clear shot. We've got to have water. Anybody volunteer? He might not shoot at a woman. He might not. He's not gonna let that water bag get back to this stage. And being a woman ain't gonna stand in his way. One man less would suit him just fine. Well, you can quit your arguing. We've got our volunteer. Start driving. I figure we got no choice. You're right. Horses have to pull this stage a couple of miles more, they'll drop. Now, when I ride out of here, you get up in those rocks. One man with a gun up there could hold off an army. He's gonna chase me. He's gotta come right by here, so you'll have an easy shot. You're the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I'll be back with help. Come. 
he's not following him. I guess he figures there's just one less man. Let's get up on those rocks. The second one, after all. You, you mean that you knew there were two of them? At the High Ridge, they told me there were two, but since we only saw one, I thought only one followed us. And you held back, Mrs. Yes, Barclay? Yes, I held back. I'd lie. I would do anything to save my daughter. One horse left, mister. You can ride out peaceful. You ride out now. Oh, no, no, you can't. You're not that kind of a man. Lassiter and Barney can ride off to save their own skins, but not you. It would stay with you for the rest of your life. I never go against a stacked deck, ma'am. If there was a chance, But I'd you're stay. not an animal. You can't ride away and leave us. We're all animals, Mrs. Barkley. We're all kin to the beasts of the field. The only difference is man knows he's gonna die, and sometimes he gets a chance to die a little later than sooner. And I intend to die later. Then leave me your gun. I can't do that, man. Those men may change their mind about letting me go peaceful. I wish there was something I could do. You can leave me your gun. I've got to have a gun. Bye, ma'am. Ardra, come with me. Ardra, come with me. Those men, those men, they want to kill you. Don't you understand? They want to kill you. Now, come with me.
Audrey, here, here, take my hand. Come on. young boy I told you about, Roy Sanders. I owe him $5,000. I'd, I'd like to send it to his family. Audra, this is Mr. Henry Matson, My daughter, Mr. Matson. How do you do, Mr. Matson? The pleasure is all mine, ma'am. You do have a beautiful voice. You caught the stage at Ravenwood, ma'am, huh? We did. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Barkley. I am, um, I'm glad you made it. And as you predicted, I, I'm finding it difficult to live with myself, if that gives you any satisfaction. It gives me no satisfaction, Mr. Matson. I'm Wilmer. Wilmer Hammett. I'm the one that sent the telegram. Well, I'm grateful to you for your kindness. Well, a man ain't got a right to call himself neighbor. He ain't helpful. Uh, the house is right up the street. Well, we still can't believe it happened. The Millers were the best you could find. The girl, Elaine. Uh, she was so pretty. So happy to have your daughter visiting. Well, that's, that's where we buried them. You know, it's hard as blazes to walk by without wanting to go after those pigs that murdered them and then... Well, I guess I'm getting too old for that. But if there's a just God, someday somebody will catch them. They'll get their due. Why did they kill the Millers? Was there any reason? Well, Sam, Mr. Miller, that is, Sam was still alive when we got there. Well, she wasn't able to say much, except uh, they were drunk, broke in the house, figuring to find money. And when they didn't, they, they just went mad. Tortured them first. Elaine, well, they used a knife on Elaine before they, before they shot him. Where was my daughter? I found her in the attic bedroom. Thank God they didn't know she was there. I'd like to see her now, please. Oh, yes, sure. Of course. Audra. Audra, I'm so good. 
Audra! Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I... I tried. The shock. She must have seen what happened. She can't hear or talk. It's like she never saw any of us before. Audra? Oh, my God! several times, Mr. Lassiter. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this here stage line. You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a local weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. Well, my hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ain't her. Why don't you shut up? It ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lassiter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lassiter, I'm disappointed in you. The man who owns his own gold mine. Nuggets sticking out of his pockets. I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson, but you ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in the depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you... Barkley? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm Wilmer. Wilmer Hammett. I'm the one that sent the telegram. Well, I'm grateful to you for your kindness. Well, a man ain't got a right to call himself neighbor. He ain't helpful. Uh, the house is right up the street. Well, we still can't believe it happened. The Millers were the best you could find. Their girl, Elaine. Uh, she was so pretty. So happy to have your daughter visiting. Well, that's... That's where we buried them. You know, it's hard as blazes to walk by without wanting to go after those pigs that murdered them and then... Well, I guess I'm getting too old for that. But if there's a just God, someday somebody will catch them. They'll get their due. Why did they kill the Millers? Was there any reason? Well, Sam... Mr. Miller, that is. Sam was still alive when we got there. Or she wasn't able to say much, except uh, they were drunk, broke in the house, figuring to find money. And when they didn't, they, they just went mad. Tortured him first. Elaine, well, they used a knife on Elaine before they, before they shot him. Where was my daughter? I found her in the attic bedroom. Thank God they didn't know she was there. I'd like to see her now, please. Oh, yes, sure. Of course. Audra. 
Audra, I'm so good. Audra! Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I... I tried. The shock. She must have seen what happened. She can't hear or talk. It's like she never saw any of us before. Audra? Oh, my God! several times, Mr. Lassiter. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this here stage line. You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a local weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. Well, my hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ain't her. Why don't you shut up? It ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lassiter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lassiter, I'm disappointed in you. A man who owns his own gold mine? Nuggets sticking out of his pockets. I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson. but you ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in that depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you are, Mr. Lassiter, I would have to find myself a new occupation, which no doubt would be good for my soul, but would certainly deprive my spirit. <laughs> I suggest we all just uh, keep quiet and allow Mrs. Barkley and her daughter to get a little rest. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Matson. But please don't let our presence interfere with your pleasure. My daughter and I have overcome bigger problems. <laughs> 